Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Jimbo VR. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today we're going to be flying the Dark Star from LAX to MCO from Los Angeles to Orlando. So let's go ahead and do that. Just going to load up in LA on one of the ramps and we'll get started. Should be a relatively short flight. Maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Probably not that long, honestly. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the battery to see if I remember how to do this. Mm, I think it's right here. All right, perfect. Turn on the APU. We're gonna turn the generators on. Turn our external lights on. We'll start the left engine and the right one. Sorry if it's a little choppy, I'm trying to stream in 1080p, 60 frames, so the computer's doing its best. It's also LA, so there's a lot to Let's load around here. Here we go. We are in the Dark Star. We're going to go ahead and taxi off, I guess. Go and uh, request taxi. And we're going to be pointed apart to the east. Los Angeles ground, Stone 1 with Golf request taxi for takeoff east departure. We don't need ATIS. Stone 1 taxi. All right, seven left via Bravo Bravo one seven. Got it. Seven left via Bravo Bravo one seven. Julia four twenty. Where's stone one one? Oh, plane just flew over me. That was cool. Taxiing old short runway seven left using taxiway Bravo Bravo one seven stone one. All right, take off the parking brake and we're off. Whoa, that's a little bit choppy. Oh, there's a couple planes popping up out of nowhere here. That's the throttle tweaking out. We're taking this taxi away here. Bravo 17, and we're turning on 7 Lima, just as we were indicated. Alright, so we're going to stop the whole short line and request clearance from the tower. Los Angeles Tower Stone 1 ready for departure to the east at runway 7 left. Runway 7 left. 
take off, live and let, stone one. Military power. Actually, I'm just going to ease it up, ease the throttle up, maybe to about 50%. We're already about 140 knots, 180, so we're going to slightly start rotating. Alright, now we're up. Gears coming up. And we're continuing for East departure. Oh, there's the LAX terminal. The hotel's nearby. I think I've stayed at one of those. Oh, it's pretty hazy today. We'll fly over Los Angeles, and then we'll make our, uh, our departure. We're going to slow down the throttles a little bit. We don't need to be cooking through so much so fast. Because we'll need all that fuel later. Dang. Oh, yeah, sure. Frequency change. Oh, there's, there's LA right there. I already pressed the frequency acknowledge button. Oh, there we go. Los Angeles Tower Stone, one frequency change. All right, perfect. SoCal Approach Stone 1 is type experimental dark star Request 4 miles northeast of Buffalo, 1,000 feet. Request flight following. Delta 1, SoCal Approach. Squawk Tree 027. Squawk Tree 027. Squawk Tree 027, Stone 1. Delta 1, radar contact. 4 miles southwest of Fort Charlie Alpha, 1, 1,000. Roger. Roger, Stone 1. Delta 1, contact, SoCal approach on 135 decimal 5. Good day. SoCal approach, 135.05. 135.05, Stone 1. Delta 1, Stone 1, Stone 1, Stone 1, Stone 1, Stone 1, Stone 1, Headed to Florida. Going to one two five decimal five. Stone five decimal five. There we go. We're going to full military power. Yeah, we're going to keep climbing here, maintaining airspeed till we get to above ten thousand feet here. We've got our flight path. I mean our. Uh, uh, where our flight path marker is actually right here in the middle of the head's display. This right here is our GPS line, so it indicates which way I need to go, basically. It's the VFR steering line. As long as I've got that within range, then I'm headed roughly in the right direction. So even though LA is north, uh, northwest of Florida by a long shot. It's still only telling us to go a little bit north of east, or the heading is about 080 that it's telling us to go. Typically, you would think that it would make you take a heading to the southeast, at least past 090, but it's not, and I think that's probably because of the curvature of the Earth. So it lands you in the right place. Okay, so we're gonna keep climbing. We get to 20,000. And then we'll go into burner from there.
right, we're coming up on 19. Here we go, switching in the right. Here we go, 20,000, we're in burner. Picking up some speed. All right, let's check the ideal flight path here. It says we're going to be climbing up 20k. All right, we got to 20,000, and then we'll be doing a roll inverted 1g pull down. All right. Scramjet. Take effect once the altitude is reached. All right, twenty-five thousand, twenty-four thousand. We're starting to pick up some speed here. Six hundred knots, seven hundred knots. We're going to start pulling up. Airspeed's increasing. Almost a thousand knots. We're going to use all that speed to gain as much altitude as possible. It's going to send us up extremely high. So now the supersonic transition at 30,000 feet. Another unloaded pull down, negative 20 degrees. All right, unloaded roll. Pull down, negative 20 degrees. Steadily. Still a thousand knots. Only Mach 2. Eighty thousand, and then a low G pushover.
80,000 feet. Rolling over a negative 20. Transition at around, it looks like we're into the scale here on 30,000. Trying to get to like 1400 knots at least. Alright, we got 1400 knots. We're slowly going to start pulling back up. Our mock is constantly increasing. There we go. We got Mach 3 now. Scramjet is enabled. You can hear the activation. Climbing in airspeed. It sounds like we had a flame out. Both of them are working fine. out because of how fast across the earth is moving. 
So if it looks a little jumpy, that's not that's not me. That's just the camera doing its thing. So we're at Mach 8.33. We're gonna try to keep climbing, get all the way up to 10. You can see a slight curve in the uh, flight line there, in the GPS line. It's not perfectly straight. It goes along with the Earth. Trying to maintain a positive climb while also increasing airspeed. Mach 9.7, 9.07. Looks like we're still climbing. Oh, whoa, holy moly, it's just jumping out of nowhere. I have no idea how that happened. Oh, I started descending a little bit, that's why. I'm gonna start pulling back up. Almost there. Almost at max altitude and max speed. Oh, we're so close. 9.84. Oh, 9.85. We're working it. We're getting closer. Oh, 9.86, 9.87. Yeah, we got this at the wrap. We've got it, gents. like constant flashing from the glass on the canopy from all the heat moving around it. trying. I am trying to get there. There you go, 9.91. Don't make a progress. Where are we at? 210,000 feet. Perfect. We're going to get a little higher up, though. Actually, a lot higher, but that's okay. Probably about 60,000, 65,000 more feet. That's the limit. Looking like we've still got enough fuel. Just gonna check my synoptics here. Time for a barrel roll. Let's see what's down there. How about one more?
That's as fast as it can roll. <laughs> Steady. Speed 5,000 knots. Okay, that makes sense. Pretty, pretty fat. How fast are moving over the ground? You can't even see anything in time. be at 5,000 feet how fast you're going so on ground level be even quicker looking all right see now the curve of the flight line the DPS line is indicating that we need to go a little bit south of east so about heading 100 more closer to 110. I'm gonna start headed that way right now. Whoa, big cloudy area over there. Must be a storm. Let's see what's over here. Nice planes. Mach, 9, Mach 10, let's go! We did it. That calls for a Mach 10 barrel roll. Yes. Maximum speed. Fastest barrel roll you've ever seen. And we were Mach 10 the whole time. Beautiful. really see the curvature of the earth from way up here, that's for sure. And yeah, I hope the stream is definitely a little bit smoother now, since I'm not in LAX and, you know, only 232,000 feet off the ground. Not much to render up here. So maybe the aliens... Ejection seat. Let's see what happens when I eject 275,000 feet off the ground. It's a good idea. I've heard good things about that. Ah, uh, you can see the terrain is definitely starting to change its appearance, looking more verdant, not as dried up. So I'm definitely approaching. Further to the east, for sure. I think I might have passed the halfway point. 
Let me get to Mach 10.1 though. That's what we're really talking about. Those RPMs at zero. I, I can't imagine how that works. But we've got plenty of fuel coming in. So that's looking good. Definitely really red. Looks like um that might be New Orleans over there. Nolens. Yeah, you can't even see the jets as much you look down there. Pretty interesting looking plane, I must say. Very cool. With this flight stabilizers in the back and everything. Clever design. I wonder if the cockpit is this simplistic though. If it is, that's pretty amazing. But I highly doubt it. It's probably missing a lot of features and switches that are confidential. Skunk Works, yet again, always killing it. I swear, I think that's Nolens over there. If anyone lives in Nolens, let me know if that's where that is. Or I might just be totally flying over a different state. Could be a part of Texas. I'm not certain. Yeah, but I think that's the, uh, that's the bridge. I kind of recognize the shape of it. I think I'm kind of over Alabama. Around that area. Yeah, now we're definitely heading further south. About uh, hitting 1.15. One, one See, it's strange. We started at about a heading zero a zero, and we just kind of parabolically turned to the right slightly. And this is to achieve the shortest flight time, the shortest flight path, do it most efficiently. We're still not at max altitude, judging by the fact that I can still climb on the altimeter here. So we're going to keep going. That's the goal. Before we land, we gotta reach max altitude and hopefully 10.1 on the Mach. Just gonna keep this climb nice and steady. There we go, 10.1. Woo! We achieved one of the goals. I can't even see the flight controls move when I give it full deflection. It doesn't look like anything's happening. Because it's probably millimeters of movement. Though, so, yeah, you would not be able to see it from that far. Still climbing. Still don't see Florida on the map. And I'm not seeing it, so we're still over 240 miles away at least. But I think I'm closer to like the Alabama area, maybe Louisiana. I think I might have passed Louisiana, I'm not sure. I'm waiting for the green to start showing up on the horizon and on the right side where the, where the ocean is. That's, that's going to indicate that um, the home state So I'm right over the ocean now. Just right over the water. I might be able to see it 
from the external view, or if I roll a certain way, let me see. If I roll this way, I might be able to actually see Florida. Uh, no, it's pretty hazy. Probably, if I turned up the field of view, like the, the, the loading radius, I'd be able to see that, but maybe not, because there's so much atmosphere in the way, and it's so far. Oh wait, no, I see, there we go, now we are within 240 miles, because here we see KORL on our heading right there, a little heading bug. Let's go ahead and make this range a little bit smaller, switch it to 160. Maybe I'm flying over Florida right now. Oh no, I'm about to be. Oh yeah, this is Florida right here. For sure. There's the panhandle. Yep. I drove all down that way to go to Louisiana to get some weed ads chicken, and it was completely worth it. And there's a YouTube video of that too. Oh yeah, there's Lake Okeechobee. A huge lake. To the right of the flight path marker. Alright, so we're within 160 miles. We're going to go ahead and cut our throttles back to military power, and we're going to begin our descent. Yes, this is how you want to do your descents, nice and controlled. You want to be 5,000 knots when you lose control of the aircraft. Sure that no damage happens. It's the best way to do it. All right, so we're gonna try to spot Lake Jessup, and it's the Sanford Airport and the Executive Airport that's gonna help me determine where the international, the Orlando International, is. There's Lake Okeechobee way down there, so that's it's 100 miles from where I need to be. So let me check the down here. I think I actually see... No, no, no. That's not the lake that I need to be looking for. I need to be looking for a lake that looks like it's got Mickey Mouse ears. That kind of helps me out. Helps me find where the International is. Also, I could look here and that will help determine as well. should be out of scramjet now we're still in burner though we've got the scramjet still on we're gonna have to disable those There's Lake Jessup, and that means that we need to be headed south. And there's the International Airport. So we'll just do a right-hand traffic pattern. Actually, no, we're going to go ahead and try to land on runway 18 right, so we get a nice view of the city. There we go. 19,000 feet, 400 knots. We've got more controls over the flight controls now. Now you should be able to actually see deflection when I move it. Yeah, you can see all of the little movements in the controls. Now they're way bigger. All right, yeah, so here's Lake Jessup right here. Tons of gators in there, as I'm sure you know. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
over here, the Oviedo Mall. Still 3,000 feet, so we're safe enough altitude. I think I recognize that place. One of the old neighborhoods. Which means that Orlando the Metropolitan is right down there. So I'm gonna give a little bit more throttle here. Just kidding, because our engines spooled out. I don't know why. All right, we got them started back up again. Gonna gain some altitude here. Actually, no, we'll land at the executive airport. That's the flight plan for KORL instead of MTO. So there's the airport we'll be landing at. Just bringing this into the city for more development, you know, bring it to the Lockheed Center, the facility that they've got here in Orlando. So we're going to do a downwind pattern over the Amway. We're now downwind to based, 180 knots. Base the final. Orlando approach is down one one thousand feet. Down to one Orlando approach altimeter. Got the gear coming down. And now for the hard part. I'm gonna land this thing without seeing straight outside is not gonna be easy. As long as we keep the flight path marker where we want to go, we should be okay. Under 60 knots, under 63. Take them a little bit high. Start descending. All right, we're over the runway. Gentle flare. Oh my god. That was awful. I broke the landing gear, but we made it back. You know what? Let me run that back. Let me just. Alright, there we go. Let me avenge myself here, because I know I can do better than that. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, that's how you do it. You fall out of the sky first thing. Now, let me gain some more altitude, apparently. There we go. There we go. Good enough speed. 200 knots. I guess we're going to land closer to like 170, 180 knots. I was going a little bit too slow. 
We got the spoilers out. We got the gear coming down. All right, there we go, 180. We're gonna try to hold it there. 170, we're a little bit slow, so we're gonna try to hold it at 180. There you go, this is good, this is good. And that flight path marker right at the start of the runway. Keeping it right at the start of the runway and then slowly flaring it to the end of the runway. Oh. All right, that's much better. That's a pearly landing, we're on the ground. We gotta stop this thing and we've slowed it down. There you go. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had fun watching me fly across the nation or of America. If you don't live in America, then thank you so much for tuning in even more because that's really cool. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.